JT and Low. You never know which way to rap. Classic, classic conversations. Conversations with JT and Low. You never know which way to rap. The Rick is gonna be genius. Conversations with JT and Low. Yeah. Classic conversations with JT and Low. You never know which way to rap. The Rick is gonna go. Classic conversations with JT and Low. You never know which way to rather live. Classic conversations. Classic conversations. conversations. With your tea and low. You never know which way to rather live. It's gonna go. Classic conversations. With your tea and low. You never know which way to rather live. It's gonna go. Classic conversations. With your tea and low. You never know which way to rather live. It's gonna go. Classic conversations. With your tea and low. You never know which way. Classic conversations with JT and Lowe. Classic conversations with JT and Lowe. Man, we are back. We are back, and we've made it at 8.30-ish by four <laughs> minutes. We're getting better. We're getting better. We're getting better. <laughs> So listen, people, we want y'all to be a part of this conversation. Please give us a telephone call when you can, 404-500-1605. While you're watching this show, please hit those buttons over there at the side, the love button, the like button, the mad button. You can even cry. doesn't matter because any button that you hit is going to help my algorithm go up. Because, again, I keep telling y'all each week, and I tell you in some of my lives during the week, we are on Spotify, we are on Amazon, we are also on YouTube. Just go in there in your search engine and put classic conversations with both words or with a K and hit the button. Subscribe. And then hit the other button. Share. I know I'm asking for two to do two things. Two things. Sorry, but yeah, do those two things for me. <laughs> so we're gonna get this thing rocking and rolling. Angela, how was your week, bro? So, how much time we got? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I wasn't here last oh, week, oh, man. Oh, yeah, got to talk about. Because yeah. I was in the city of angels, Los Angeles, California. I received a personal invitation from a man earthquake to his birthday party. And um, let me just say, it was a true Hollywood party. In every sense of the word, Hollywood party, man. When I say it was star-studded, it was a comedian's doggone. If you're a comedian, it was like a comedian's haven. You know what I mean? I'm talking about when you get the likes of Dave Chappelle, Mike Epps, DC, DL, uh, uh, DL Hughley, Sergio Natana, um, uh, Jay Farrow. I mean, it just, the list just goes on and on, man. Everybody in one building. You know, I mean, it was, it was cool as a fan, but. My, mo my moment of moments was, man, I got to meet my man, one of the greatest producers of all time, probably second only to Quincy Jones, Dr. Dre. <laughs> hey, man. You know. Bro, you sent me that picture? I said, oh, old Bill is at the, I said, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> the hell is that on the other side? <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> right. <laughs> Photoshop myself in there, boy. <laughs> man, when I say, man, when I, I was sitting there talking with Bill Bellamy, and it was the first time I seen Bill since all that BS happened with, with, right. with that Buster dude. I ain't gonna give him respect to call him his name. Yeah, or name, nameless. So my first time seeing Bill since then, man, we had a great conversation, man. He picked me up, hugged me, all that it was real cool. And I looked to my left, and I said, hey, man, I look like Dr. Trey. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so me and Bill were talking some more. I was like, I'm talking to myself. I'm like, you know what I mean? You don't want to sound. I'm like, I'm like Dad, I think that's Dr. Dre. <laughs> and so finally, I saw Bill go over there. Bill said, oh, man, I got to talk to my boy Dre. I said, man, I knew that was Dr. Dre. <laughs> so I go over there, and I said, I said, him and Bill were talking about like five or so minutes, right? And I was like, man. You're only gonna get this opportunity once. You can't pass up this opportunity. So I said, hey, Bill, I tapped him on the shoulder. I said, man, 
I ain't never really used nobody before. <laughs> but I'm about to use you for this introduction to Dre. <laughs> <laughs> and Dre start laughing. Because Dre right here, Bill right there. And I'm like, I'm about to use you. Because I don't just want to, you know what I mean? And Bill's like, oh, man. He said, Dre, this is my man, Angelo, Uptown, kind of going to let him. Dre said, oh, what's up, bro? And so then Bill went right back to tell his story they were talking about. And then he said, yeah, Angelo, the first time I met Dre. So now, keep that in mind. He said, yo, Angelo, first I he put me in the conversation. Mm-hmm. So I was like, well, shoot. Man. I'm chilling there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I see. He just included me in that conversation. <laughs> so, hey, man, it was the next 15, 20 minutes, bro. I'm just there chilling with Dre and Bill Bellamy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's what's up. Hey, man. It's not there, huh? Hey, man. Hey, you know what I mean? So I was like. So that jump was just the coolest fan to me, bro. I ain't going to lie. I, I said, the only thing could have made this jump more fanboy to me would have been if Ice Cube or L.L. walked the building. Other than that, man. And I was, I had a good time. And when I see my boy Earthquake, happy birthday to my boy Quake, oh, man. So. I was going to, listen, first of all, you hear Joker say, man, yeah, old boy bought the bar. You know what I mean? It might be for 30 minutes, an hour. It might just be for so many drinks. This kind of, hey, man, Quake bought out the bar. When I say any and everything, and then they just kept bringing out food by the platter load, just food. And I say, I don't even eat steak no more, man. But they had a little steak on a toothpick. I don't know what kind of steak they said it was. I mean, that jump melted in my mouth, man. That jump was so good, man. Not on a toothpick. Hey, hey, it was so good. You, you, you eat that steak. I, hey, man. <laughs> you, got, you like rich people I've never had sushi a day in my life. Food. I know that's what everybody saying. I've never had, they had something called crab, egg, crab rolls. It was some kind of crab rolls. <sighs> man, it was so good. I don't know about regular sushi, but this particular one. And so I'm about me and me and uh, Sergeant and Tana chatting up, and the lady come out there with a plate of lamb chops. <laughs> hey, we just about to take a picture. I said, "Hey, hold up," because <laughs> I knew if I don't get that lamb chop right now, if it hit that corner, it, oh, it's vomitos. <laughs> hey man, it was all delicious though, man. The food was absolutely delicious. The drinks kept coming. I, the, the, I, I was ordering old fashioned. Dude just kept bringing. I was like, man, another one. You know what I mean? But, and then at the end of the night, I tried to buy. I, I just wanted a bottle of water. You know what I mean? I, give me a bottle of water. Man, they came out with a bag. Uh, what's one of the expensive <laughs> bottles? It was not bigger than Fiji. It was some. Hey, the, the, but, the, the, but it was the, the whole the, freaking the, bottle. The, the, I'm thinking I'm gonna get a little water like that. It was the whole bottle. I said, Quake. I said, boy, you bought out the bar. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you bought out the bar, bro. I mean, that's even, good, even good, the water. Like what? Yeah, that cost, bro. That's, hey, that's man. So anyway, man, I had a great week. <laughs> It was really, really awesome. I missed y'all, man. But it was really, 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 really awesome. Well, appreciate you fucking up for everybody else, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From, I breathe. I was breathing. That, okay? that, that, that lasted from Tuesday still. Hey, still. No matter what I'm else still, happened, still that right there made your whole week. Yeah, still not, high, man. You know, then get a look back at the pictures like, man, I was at that party. You know what I mean? Should have let him go last. <laughs> <laughs> not nobody even listening. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> like a peanut show. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Oh, man. Yeah, man. That was cool, man. How was y'all's week? <laughs> I got, I got shit to say. <laughs> I'm alive, okay? I thought I had fun. <laughs> right, right. Thought we had fun, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, man. Hilarious. I was at a, a party with Chicken quarters <laughs> with <laughs> and hamburgers and hot dogs. <laughs> and thought we was doing something had smoked sausage <laughs> and fried fish. <laughs> so <hey. laughs> I ain't got shit to say. <laughs> Don't ask me how I'm doing. <laughs> oh man, that's hilarious. <laughs> oh. I swear, man, after I caught a contact when I went outside. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. I'm, like, I'm a little hot. Hey, yeah, yeah. I like, can't stop laughing. Let's hey. <laughs> go ahead and run to the show. <laughs> I walked out Next. to the car and I went through a cloud. And, uh, oh, boy. Ooh, we. <laughs> Hilarious. Yeah. Hilarious. Wow. wow. Okay. Um, so, ask the cop. You was at a barbecue with chicken quarters and fish and hot dogs and hamburgers. <laughs> yeah, and, then, and it great, was good. Now, great, great about the only thing I can say to add to it was it's pretty good. It was a bunch of vets. And we actually, you know, you, ones that uh, lost people, 
they talked about it, so it was pretty good. But you no, know, just bros getting together. I was still on the wagon, so. And you know what? I I, I, June 1st. I, I don't think people understand yeah, the difference between Veterans Day and Memorial Day. They do not. Mm -hmm. I appreciate everybody that sent me a message. I do. Right. Mm -hmm. But Memorial Day. <laughs> <laughs> that boy. Yeah, you know I mean, let him go last. <laughs> <laughs> That's Not nobody. That's mm -hmm. correct. Or decorated yeah. soldiers original. You, you're taken away from that part of. Um, I appreciate it. I promise you, I do. But it's basically for family members who lost that, family that lost family members. Mm -hmm. You know, as an act mm -hmm. duty. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, I, I hope that somebody will, I posted it. I don't think nobody even liked it. They, didn't, they don't get it. I, I posted the whole meme of that last year. You know what I mean? But people still, you know, so right. I was like, all right. They wasn't giving no yeah, discounts at Applebee's know. or nothing like that. You know why? Because the people that they were celebrating wasn't <laughs> 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 so, there, there, there wasn't no, wasn't no veterans eating for free or nothing. <laughs> It, was, it didn't happen, I, 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 and, and you know, I just wish that people would get that part, man. They, 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 every year they don't get it. Every year, and sometimes the same people. Again, I appreciate it. I do, but um, yeah, remember that for you know those folks. And it's crazy when they say Happy Memorial Day. Like, right, right. <laughs> you know how you celebrate. <laughs> you know, you yeah, know. you're right. The realtor hub is in the building. What's up, young lady? Hey, y'all. Yeah, you've been gone you. about a month, man. Yeah, it's been, been, been a minute. Weeks, I, I mean, know. getting your money, I ain't mad at you. Getting your certifications and everything. Yeah, I just passed my exam to become a licensed insurance agent. There we go. Congratulations. Thank Congratulations. You. There we go. Thank you. So I'm waiting for multiple streams. Multiple streams. Oh, what yeah. I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. yeah. And there's yeah. a lot of us out here who need this information because there's a lot of our families out here that, you know, I, I, I just went through it. it. My yeah. father didn't have a policy, so. It's really near and dear to me, and I'm excited. Good stuff. Well, yeah. congratulations on that. Thank Glad you. to have you back. Glad to have you back. Friend of the show came back through. So, Mr. Nash, how you doing, sir? Man, I probably had one of the best weeks of my life, brother. I'm not gonna lie to you. My son graduated Ooh. from high school. Uh, I was about to say, who party did you go to? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't go to an Angelo party, you know, but. Uh, my son graduated from high school with a 3.8 GPA. Um, it's like a highs and lows kind of thing. Yeah. But you know, I don't want to get into the lows. You know how certain things just come up out the bushes on you be like, rah. But seeing him walk across the stage and having so much joy and to see my dad have tears of joy. Right. You know, being that we've had a rough year since my mom passed, seeing my dad just smile and have a good time. That, that's what it's all about. That's dope, bro. And guess what else? What? It's the summertime. We all die. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have they had that, that? They usually have one weekend where they have all the parties for the school teachers. Have they had that yet? It's going on right it's going now. Going on. Yeah. KD yeah. said, congratulations, Nash. Well, congratulations to you too, yes. KD, man. And, and, and our guy over there, he graduated as well, man. They're Manny going fresh. Manny, Manny Fresh. <laughs> That's what's up, brother. Hey, I appreciate you people hitting them buttons, boy. I saw them things flying. Keep hitting them because it's going to help my algorithm go up. Keep telling you. What's up, Harry? How you doing, cuz? Hey, listen, JT, before you go on, though, I want to say something about this graduation thing. Oh, I know. Thank you. Well, it might be something different, but let me just say, I want people to start, I guess if you have any concerns of your fellow man, fellow kids, I noticed something last year at graduation, so I try to make a point of doing this now, right? Um, you don't realize the number of kids that graduate high school with zero family support. Mm. Zero. Very true. That's crazy. And I noticed it during my son's graduation as we were leaving and I'm watching the kid walking home from graduation by himself. Right. Or to and his I, car. And right? I said, no, he was not walking to his car. We were walking. Oh, he was wow. literally walking from the graduation by himself. 
And I was like, man, we don't even think about that because we are so excited, so engulfed. You know what I mean? You see all the family members ready to just race the field, take the pictures. You don't think about those kids, man. There's kids that graduate with zero support. You don't know where mama and daddy's at. Some of them might be in jail. Some of them might be strung out. Some of them might be at work. I, oh, but that moment when you have no one, so I, so I kind of started making a point of watching those kids as they leave. And if nothing else, I go to them and say, congratulations. Good luck to you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just to see the smile on that face. You know, because one thing with the kids, but for an adult, some, you know what I mean? So I just say that to people. Just, you know, keep those things in mind, man, when you're leaving out that field. Just... Cause it, it 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 really it really hurt thinking about the jump, man. I ain't gonna lie, you know what I mean? Cause you don't think about the number of kids out there by themselves at that great moment. Right. Is it, really? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And I was praying. Is that right? Wow. That's deep. That's deep. About a story. Yeah. That's the topic. Yeah. 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 I didn't want to damper the moment, but I just had to tell up because I didn't want to forget. <laughs> and you said do all those damper moments at the beginning, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're, we're at the buzzer go off, but real quick, um, um, in regards to the graduation thing. So one more quick ideas. little tutorial that I want to show because um, I had some. <laughs> I don't want to make it sound too bad, but listen, people, when they graduating from preschool, uh, <laughs> Whatever. Get him. When they, no, no. When they hilarious. graduate from preschool, I, 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 I no, no, it, uh, uh, uh it, no. They graduate from preschool, man. They they drunk some stuff out of a sippy cup. Um, <laughs> they played with some blocks. Nobody. Have anybody ever heard somebody not leaving preschool? Their mama didn't pay. <laughs> <laughs> they got a balance. <laughs> they got a balance. They got a balance. Dude. That's they hilarious. Got, ain't got no graduation. Hey, look, look. Nash warned me about you. <laughs> I swear he did. Swear hey, he warned me about that's you. That's hilarious. Your yeah, section eight got cut off with COVID. <laughs> you know. <laughs> you oh, what's thirteen hello? <laughs> we, we gonna see your shit in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> From, yeah, your preschool <laughs> <The> preschool <laughs> Your preschool <laughs> You know, it's a pride. You know, yeah, yeah. Your, your child is getting ready to go and actually, you know, learn something. You know, read. You know, I, I get it. But <laughs> having motorcades <laughs> and stuff, bro. I seen it. I, seen you it know, off. social media. You see, they have a motorcade, little little baby sitting up on something in the, in a drop top. And all what? the other cars riding behind them. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Oh, yeah. You're setting them up for failure. That's You're setting them up for failure. Okay, yeah. <laughs> like I said, you, you, you figured out how to take the straw and put it in the Capri Sun bag. <laughs> <laughs> Graduate. <laughs> it's, it's, you should not be going that crazy about that. I, I, it's, a, it's another money grab. Cap and gal. <laughs> Oh, yo, what? <laughs> All right, okay. What's happening, sir? What's up, what's up? Hey, man. Hey, y'all, listen, this is our special guest tonight, man. All of the topics that you see we're going to talk about tonight is courtesy of this young man. Hmm. Mr. Anthony Wright, how you doing, bro? Night. Night. I do right, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, I knew you would do it. I knew you would get it right. <laughs> So listen, man, uh, we're glad to have you here and everything. And we're going to ask you real quick, how was your week? I'm almost scared because man, man you warned like me what y'all had. I, I, uh, <laughs> nothing but probably had a raccoon in the, in the attic. <laughs> had to go fix that. Mm. Got to rebuild my garage on the rental property. And uh, had to get home. Man, that's a good thing, rental property. That's good stuff right there. That's good stuff. You know, I know you slid that in there. I, I got you. I got you. Well, I ain't had a raccoon in the, in the big house. <laughs> So the raccoon, the raccoon was up in, in the rental property. So I had in a raccoon attic. in the garage in the attic, and then I found out I got to do the roof on the garage. Oh, you got a raccoon out yourself? Yeah, I got him out myself. I ain't paying nobody. Mm. Not the kid. 
<laughs> you went up there and got it? No, right. no, no. When yeah. you get out, once he out, you just close it back up. And then you set the trap on the ground. Oh, you had him in the trap. That's how you got no, it. No, 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 no. He, 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 no, no, no. It's a hole in the roof. That's how you get in. Mm. Then when you get out, you just make sure you go up there, make sure you're not in there. You close the hole up and then put the trap down when he come back. But he was in the mm. trap. No, I ain't, I, ain't, I don't no, mess no. with trap. He just, he just got no. him out. No, he just, he, I ain't touching him. He got him out. Oh, I don't even know what he looked like. Yeah. I wasn't tracking because I thought I said, this is a bad one. Yeah, I, yeah, I, that's <laughs> not what I said. I'm about to call Moody. He went out. Hey, hey, right. hey, my, okay. yeah. hey, my thoughts too. I'm like, he was in an attic. There's a lot of space up there. He's wrestling a raccoon. <laughs> Hey, bro, you whew. good. I'm glad I'm the only one that didn't take it. Yeah, I, I did. Said, okay, well, that, yeah, that, that, that wait for him to leave and they close the hole. Oh, okay. Oh, man, I could have oh, done man. that. You had the way you started off. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, Angelo, you could have done that too. Manly man shit. Pro probably, but I ain't. <laughs> All right, so listen, man, we're going to come right back. We're going to get started on this thing. We're going to start off with the main one. <laughs> <laughs> When, when are black people gonna recognize that white people just don't like us? <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> you, better, you, you can't get in that. Look, you just got your license. Look, I tried. Hey, I tried to break this thing. Classic conversations. Yeah, there we go. Classic conversations with JT and Lope. And that's a cop. Hit those buttons over there, man. Like button, love button. Y'all you, you were doing it. You stop. I need you to keep doing it. Keep hitting those buttons because it's going to help our algorithm. algorithm. Go. I know what it is. <laughs> go up. <laughs> I didn't say shit before. I ain't even gonna lie. They told if you had. 10,000 likes for the week. I was like, well, I only see 50 <laughs> smiling faces. So, and, then, and then she showed me how to look. Okay, now I've been laughing too much, but hey, I know what it is now. Hey, man. Man. All the other times, I'm the fuck hey, Last week. I know now, so I won't participate. La last week, them part. trying to say it at the same time. Boy, they, oh. Hilarious, man. Oh, it, it was crazy. Sure. It was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it was crazy. So yeah, man, we're gonna get this thing going. Um, please be a part of this conversation. Four zero four five zero zero one six zero five. Like I said, we're gonna get right on into the nitty gritty. I'm gonna clean it up a little bit. Though. I'm gonna clean it up a little bit. Okay. Respect, equality, and acceptance. Why do we, as a culture, as black people, seek these things from a people, white people, that has kept us down on purpose? But what if it just does not happen? Will we accept that they do not want us at their table? Will we accept that they will not treat us as equal? Will we accept that they just do not like us? Now, of course, people, I'm not speaking, me, <clears throat> excuse me, me, I'm not speaking on a whole, but I am speaking on a majority. <laughs> speaking on a majority, so, you know, um, Let's let's get started. What you got, Asakar? What, what you what you think about this here? Oh, you want me to open my vest, sir? Fuck? Nah, it ain't gonna happen. Nah, <laughs> no, especially this man over here. I know he's ready to pounce. Yeah, no, not me. But no, nah, no, nah, I'm just I'm, I'm just joking around. But what I will say is this: uh, I think sometimes we can be too cynical. I think the system that was in place to keep us down is still in place. I think a lot of people have changed, particularly the younger youth. Because it's different. When I went to a so-called integrated school, it was integrated in name only. You know, and I and I went to seven. I went to one where there was only four ink spots and a seal white. And so it's a fake friendship somewhat. Some were genuine, but a lot was fake. But I think what you get now, anytime you go down the street and you hear certain music playing and you expect them, there's gonna be four of them bouncing with the head, with plats in the hair doing this. And you look over and it's a car full of white kids. Or it's a car full of <laughs> white and black kids. Well, so I think it's integrated a lot more. Now, if we're talking about our age group and probably from 35 and up, I think, yeah, there's a lot of issues. From the lower half, including the LGBTQ community, uh, I think that's a situation where they've been accepted and I think it's pushed away. It's like, well, damn, we're gonna accept them. We got, well, accept the blacks too. And so I think there's a lot more going on. I think there's a lot less racism. 
but it's, the system's still in place, and that hasn't been broken down, so that affects us more so than the individual. I'm gonna try to stay comical as I reply, but, <laughs> but I'm gonna be serious. The system is in place, the people are in place, and there ain't nothing changed but the date and the time. So if you, if you, if you look at stuff, now you gotta first say this because people always get sensitive, especially black people. We're not talking about all white people. You know, right. some white women produce black children. Some white people die for the cause. Mm -hmm. So from that point, I won't say it anymore. When I say white people, that's what I, I mean. People who support the structure, the system that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And so the system hasn't changed in the sense that the <laughs> outcomes that we have in America are at the bottom. Healthcare, education, mm -hmm. uh, finance. Get it to you like this. All the billionaires, black billionaires in America got less than one white man. One white man, Elon Musk, Warren Buffett, Got more money than Jay Z, Oprah, uh, Robert Smith combined. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Combined, one white man got more money. We've been here 400 years <laughs> since 1700s. Before white folks got here, we was here. Mm -hmm. And we got one white man got more money than all the black people. You got health care healthcare outcomes. You know we die more mm -hmm. from these situations. Our stress is more. You know, like we live on Earth is already stress on you. Uh, then our education system. The best educated black children are black-faced white children. Mm. Right? We don't know who we are once we get educated. We go to school f from pre-K. Mama didn't pay that money, <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't graduate. But you go from pre-K to Harvard, and you don't even know who you are. You're just as ignorant as little, little Pookie on the side of the street w with, with a gun hanging out with an extra clip. Because you're going to harm your people just like him. Because you don't know who you are. You don't know where you come from. You don't know the absence of ignorance that you, that you possess. And all you can do is harm your people. You look down on your people once you become educated and get some paper. If they, if they just. You know, that's you, your you uncle. You can't paint everybody with the same brush. I think that's wrong. Everybody, everybody black that's taking the time to improve themselves doesn't look down on black people that haven't made it. I think there's a lot <clears throat> of African Americans that are starting to get to the point where they're tired, I don't use the N word, I use the word infected. They're tired to what the people that have succumbed to the system mm -hmm. and I've keep treated like it's an illness. Like say if you got cancer, infected have cancer. It's a cancer called lack of education, lack of trade, lack of trying. They've been in the system. They were born to a mother that was 13. Her mother was 15 when she had her, things of that nature. So the system, that's what I mean by the system's still in place, so a lot of people are trapped. So from that standpoint, it's not, I don't think people look down. I think what's hurting us as a people, we're not staying in our own communities. We're branching out because we want our kids to have the opportunity to better. No, not what, no, you said, that's, 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 just, that's just saying shit to say it because a lot of people just do it because you want a better education for our children. Then why you don't teach your own children? Because the way America's set up, it typically takes two incomes or one good income. So you're trying to get a place where you're nurturing your kids, you're getting them started right, you're back in a month, but you want a good school system where they're gonna get the curriculum. I'm not saying it can't happen in Atlanta, but it's just like every school teacher in the city of Atlanta at one point was sending their kid to Grady High School. If you couldn't send them to Grady, you went to Mays or Douglas. After that, nobody put their kid in Atlanta public but, but, but you got, what, what are, name me some Afrocentric schools. Schools that teach children they black. In well, Atlanta. That's, a, that's the home. If you're not teaching that, no, 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 no. To schools. Kids. Name me I can't think one of school that teach children they black in Atlanta. Well, I should know they're black, and if you're doing what you're supposed to do, I got you. Got is that one? Hotel. Is that one school over there by uh, East Lake? <clears throat> used to be East Lake Meadow. What's what's that private school? I think the they one do. over there on. Is it the all boys school over there on on back Hollowell? <laughs> Usher, Usher Middle School does a good job. Uh, Olds Turner did a good job. Douglas does a very good job. Douglas is a public school. Well, I mean, I don't think, can't think of a private school. I'm just saying some public schools do a good well, job. Well, that's an Afrocentric, which means that you understand you are black. You understand that you have responsibility to your community. Like, we have to define who we are, right? So who are we as black people? So we have to 
find that place amongst each other. So when you say we want a better education, reading more books don't make you smart, right? If you don't know you black, <coughs> you, you, you in this world from a black lens. So when I say Afrocentric, means that you are taught who you are the best of who you are, right? You are taught mm -hmm. you are from a, a, a country that, that birthed all civilizations. You were taught that you are the heirs and, and the byproducts of the greatest people who ever walked the face of the earth. By D, mm -hmm. by D, not by belief, but by D. So when you look at these situations, you look at the empires of Africa, and you look at this, if you look at, if you look at slavery, which is what they used to talk, that's what white people used to start you at slavery. Before there was slavery, we were here thousands, tens of thousands of years. Tens of thousands of years before there was slavery. Matter of fact, we taught white people what slaves was, because we had slaves before they was even coming to Africa. But it was, it was a different ideology at that point. So when you say teach a kid, so you have to teach that child that they're, like for example, Jewish kid is not going is not is not going to go to a school predominantly white, black, Spanish, whatever, and not know he has a bar mitzvah coming up at thirteen. Facts. He's not yeah, going to know exactly. uh, some Yiddish or some Hebrew. Yeah, and I see your point. You're trying to make a Chinese boy, boy won't do it. I'm either. saying I didn't say that you don't cheat. You didn't teach your kids, and I would venture to say if you go word for word and mm -hmm. you look at the parents that are educated and they've moved, and I'm not endorsing that at all, but you got to realize it's a total different school system than if you're in New York City or Chicago or a place that values education. But you're talking about the city of Atlanta, and you got money, and say you bought on uh, Flamingo Road, and the school that your kid's going to go to, I think that would be, what's the one on Camelton Road? What high school gets that area? Your high school. Southwest Atlanta Christian. Hmm? Southwest Atlanta Christian. No, no, I'm not saying private school, but uh, public school. Westlake, okay, Westlake. And you're looking at certain schools, and then you look at the crime rate. It's not the fact that the teachers aren't trying. It's not the fact I want my child to be, because I've been, I want to see the growth, okay? And I know how it is, and my sister went to St. Pius. And I know what ends up happening when you put a, a quality youth in a situation where the teacher has to have a side row for the kids that's going to, always cut up. Just go over there, don't make noise, and sit. And then it affects your child Let in a, in a learning process. I was taught very much so what it means to be a black man in, in, um, in America and how to carry yourself and how to react. So I'm not Where, saying everybody... At Cedar Grove? No, no, no. I'm talking oh. about at home. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. I'm talking about at home. About to say. I'm saying about at home. So what ends up <laughs> happening when you're raised a certain way at home, you know what to expect. And so I think what happens, a lot of people think, okay, just because you go to an all-black school is any better, and it's not because a lot of those people are even less educated because they don't have a clue on what really happened. Well, it's let me like get, what you speak Wait, of. wait. Let, let, mm -hmm. I, I think both of y'all are making good points, but I think you, you're talking about being taught to be black in America and, and what to expect and everything. You're getting that from home. And your history, right. too, and your, yeah. and your history. But I think what he is speaking about <laughs> is... The historical fact of it, you know, the, the ancestry and, and well, that's and my mom that, was a teacher. That, that you know, you get all that, and I think the, there's a fallacy when people think why people did it. The people that I know, a lot of people moved to Decatur where it was greater in the '80s, and they did that to afford their children a better education because of some of the school systems that were so poor and still are under. Or, 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 or failing schools. And that's something that has to be reversed in our community. But to say just because you moved your kid or put your kid in a chance to get a better education is not saying that you're giving up on black because some of the most black and prideful people I know are people that are educated and took the time to pass it on to their children. I'm not even saying that you gotta be educated to pass it on to your children, but no, come on, that's apples and oranges. But I, I think it's two foes here. We can't take an individual, we gotta look at it from a, a macro standpoint. Yeah, I'm looking at And this is what I mean by white people don't like us. That's been the outcome since we've been in the, since we've been going to school with white people, that's been our outcome. Only time we had positive outcomes in the school, I think it's the only time. When we had the, the largest amount of black people that benefited from the education was when we were segregated. When we were forced to be mm -hmm. taught by our Crow. people. Right? Mm -hmm. Once we began integration, which is a strategic move. You got, it's strategic. White people, so if I understand something, if I understand this is the outcome of children for 50, 60 years, 
from a macro standpoint, if I'm on the school board, I got, or I got government issues that I'm running, I got to solve that issue. Because <clears throat> white, white, white immigrants had the same problem when they came. Okay. White people had the same problem. Irish, Irish got poor education. Italians got poor education. Right? Okay, let's reset this. Let's reset this. Because my answer was talking about here right now. Here right now. Why some people, what you're going back to is since things that happen like, okay, when we, yeah, we were better. No. If blacks stayed in Jim Crow, we probably wouldn't be in the situation we are now. But Jim Crow, so we can go back and talk about that. But when you mix the, uh, the two, it's hard to talk about. It. Let's stay. Well, what, what, what stay on mix now. what? Hmm? Well, let's look, at, let's look at this. You just said Westlake, predominantly black school. Mm hmm. You look at Westlake, and you look, and, and it's pretty, it's pretty progressive black school. I mean, and, you, yeah, but if you want to compare, like, a, a, okay, a very good black school in Atlanta would be Mays. Okay, and let's Doug. look at Benjamin Mays. Mays and Doug's would be two good schools. Benjamin Mays and Doug. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So let's look at the poor schools, mm -hmm. which would be what? Tri Cities. Be just about. Over in Westlake, in the Thero. Other. Yeah, Thero would be. So that's Thero. Those outcomes were predicted. 15 years ago. You, you knew them kids was going to do bad when you knew in third, fourth, fifth grade mm -hmm. these were the scores they were putting out. Exactly. So what are my interventions and how do I intervene? If I'm the government, if mm -hmm. I'm the government, I'm the, I'm the board, I'm the board. Mm -hmm. How do I intervene? Well, you don't do like they did in the city of Atlanta and help them with the test. Why not? <laughs> Fuck that test. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't no good for my children anyway. Man, you got kids don't even, oh I mean, you God. got kids graduating school man, in Atlanta don't even know Martin Luther King is. I mean, they know I have a dream. But King, you know, King said to America that you are the greatest proponent of violence. And if you don't get your stuff together, you will, you will suffer and God will punish you. The same thing, the same thing Jemiah Wright said, goddamn America, King said in a little different way. Mm. You see? Mm -hmm. Jemiah Wright said and Barack Obama did what? Shit it on him. Barack Obama shit on Jeremiah Wright for saying, God damn America. <laughs> King said the same thing in April. I've been April. saying that for a while. Well, he, King said the same thing when he's talked about the Vietnam War. But so we go back to this point. The point is, is that we got to understand, it's not just education. It's mm -hmm. all kind of outcomes. Anytime you got one man got more money than a whole fucking race, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's some <laughs> fucked up shit, man. <laughs> damn. Oh, I'm not to disagree with When you saying. tell me I go to the hospital and I got sugar diabetes and you pump a pills up my ass and all, you, all I need to do is change up my diet and walk. Mm. And you trying to put pills in me, pills in me, pills in me, pills in me. Mm. That shit's fucked up. I'm dying with heart attacks and shit at a higher rate than everybody else. Mm. It, all the outcomes, all the outcomes, you, you know, they keep all this data on you. And, and they know what, what the algorithms that you mm -hmm. said, they know what the outcome's mm -hmm. going to be. And they don't fix them. We ain't got reparations, bro. How in the fuck you enslaved somebody for 200 years? And oh, yeah, to this hey. day, to this day, tomorrow when you you're wake up. You're preaching to the choir. I definitely agree with what right. you're saying. I made a statement. I made a now you're directing everything like, hey. No, no, I'm not saying. Why, we we, we got to what I'm saying. We, we, yeah. we, but black okay, people my don't point is, No, my point is, and I agree with everything you're saying, let's talk some about also solutions. The solution is this. first to understand why people don't like you. That's why they don't do it. Black people cannot do shit till they recognize you got to heal first, right? I agree with that. The second thing you got to do is develop a, 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 a truth. We got to accept truth. White people don't like you, bro. <laughs> they, are, they are committed to the two. Ain't no country in the fucking Europe that's not benefiting from black bodies, black bodies being fucked up. Mm -hmm. All of them, from the East yeah. Side, from Russia, the... Mm -hmm. The names we can't France. say, Papa, Papa, Papa. Yeah. And, 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 and France and England, they benefit from our suffering. Well, Think America, about that's America this day, we're the biggest cash cow. How can the incarceration? Congo, you know, you need to. We're not the biggest cash cow. We're the biggest story of black bodies. Underclass to exist. We're the biggest story of black bodies. We're not the biggest cash cow. We're the biggest stories of black bodies. And black people do not accept that reality. Mm. Well, I think, too, what we, and I, you know, I'm more about solutions. And I think, and I've said a lot of times on the show, what our problem is as a people, we elect black people because you're attacking the Atlanta public school system. It's a black mayor, black head of uh, uh, school board. Probably most schools are 98% black teachers other than Grady. And see, what I think the problem is that we have the black 1%, I like to call them, and it's not in the 1% money-wise, but in the black population, if you look at that 1% that controls all the black cities, 
that, that are black, black people, they've done nothing but line their own pockets. That's from the, your Maynard Jacksons. And I'm talking about Maynard now. Well, come on, Fat Albert, Fat, Albert, <laughs> Fat Albert didn't do anything but was a mayor of Atlanta. Here's the law firm he worked for, the law firm he later worked for, yeah, yeah, yeah. the city of Atlanta bought the old Sears building that was so invested with, um, infested with asbestos that we could only use a small fraction of it the whole time the city of Atlanta held it. Officers and employees were getting sick in that building. Okay, he retires. Then, guess what law firm uh, he works for the law firm that ends up buying the Seals building and then selling it. So man, it was a bad man, though, man. Well you, well, you can say what you want, but there's a lot when you have situations, and it happens a lot with black cities. Uh, comment, uh, man, you think white folks are lying? They probably. I'm not see that's a problem. See now, <laughs> you're doing exactly what hurts us as a people. Everybody wants to think of 19 reasons to justify when a black man shits on black people. And I've said this a lot of times in the show. We need a Malcolm X. We need a Ma when you're in that position. I've never been in that position. Malcolm X didn't on black people. Okay. All right. You gonna? Hey, well, who was Detroit Little? <laughs> my point is simply this. My point is, is, is Detroit is Little was, this. was, was, was We don't start on. holding our black leaders. If we don't start Robin. holding our black leaders feet to the fire and account exactly accountable. We're always going to be in this. Yeah, but we, we can't, can't expect to be perfect, up, Okay, bro. my thing is, if you're truthful about what you're saying, I 100 percent agree with everything you said, there has to be another part of it where we start holding black leaders accountable. We do that, we, we do that in private. And, and no, we, see, that's the problem. No, no, we got to do that problem. in private. It doesn't happen in private. It does happen okay, in private. Okay, name me one person. That's Andy Young got checked. She had King checked Young plenty of times. Jesse Jackson been checked by uh, 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 Bevels. <clears throat> King had been checked before. And, and you got temporary people. Barack Obama get checked. Shit, you think when he shit it on Jermaine Wright, it was all over with? Where's the change? Okay, where's the change? Where, where have we seen the change? Every time you get a, a city of Atlanta is had black mayor after black, black mayor after, after black. black mayor. And you know the only people that get dicked down in the city of Atlanta are black people. in the country. Y'all got the, the property rates in the top 10. Fat, one of the fastest growing cities in the country. Y'all done passed up D.C. as the blackest city. Okay, now, this is my point I'm trying to get you to see. Now, you talked all this black pride, black pride, black pride, and we, we we're on the same page. But where the disconnect comes is holding people accountable. I said okay, hold them accountable have, in private. Uh, pretty soon, the only thing black in the city of Atlanta is going to be the cars rolling through it, okay? Because there's so many places packed. The average apartment in Atlanta is almost $1,400 a month. A poor black person cannot afford that apartment. The mayor did not put any mechanisms in place. Most times when it's up north and its gentrification occurs, there's a grandfather clause that allows poor black people that are in their 60s and 70s to keep their houses and, mm -hmm. and, and keep their houses. Okay, if they weren't allowed, there's a grandfather that's put in place. They don't have to sign nothing. In the city of Atlanta, they had town home meetings and community meetings with the MPUs, because I had to go to them before I retired, and those people would show up and they'd have voting things where, you know, they're voting on, are they going to allow this to be put in and this to be put in. The only people that still went there were the older black people that can still go there, small contingent. Now, you know these absentee white people that didn't live in the neighborhood yet, that bought these houses, would show up with their cousins and everybody else and vote. Okay, that dick and down was occurring, and everybody in the city of Atlanta knew about it. All right, Mike, hold on one second. But I do agree it should be done in private because they, they want us to destroy each other op openly. That's why it needs to be done in private because they don't do it to themselves in, in public. They do it in private. Let me, read, let me read these comments real quick before we go to this break. KD chimed in. He said, we'll never be equal. We weren't made to be equal. I want you to elaborate on that comment when you said we weren't made to be equal. Um, Who are they to be equal to, though? That's why I want to elaborate on this comment. Um, see what they get all stuff together because they're, theirs are catered and structured for them, period. School teaches every black and brown person came off the boat uh, route, and we know that's a bunch of BS. Ben said the system is not always the excuse. We know the system is what it is. Why are we not creating a system to protect ourselves from this system? Which I went to a men's conference Sunday. Uh, I got to tell you all about that tonight. Um, school should not, Elena said, school should not teach us our blackness. Should be done first in homes. If there are good black history classes, it can help. If taught by a good, balanced black teacher, integration change the system. When blacks taught blacks, whites can't teach us black our blackness. Our people don't want to teach anymore, not enough money, sad. 
I need to teach my children about, and my church youth about being black in America. Ben said, we don't have reparations because we're still asking the oppressors to think about their oppression. <laughs> the world court is, on our, is our only way to make a real rep reparations plea. And he said, ask a cop once they want to get checked in the public eye. <laughs> I would have to agree with the brother tonight. These things happen privately. I also agree with that. We'll be right back. <laughs> I wouldn't talk about that. It did not stop at all. <laughs> it did not I'm stop. Okay. I'm real the whole time we was on break, like I said, I'm sitting there just getting educated. That's exactly what I'm here for today. Yeah, classic conversations with JT and Lowe. And that's a cop. Yeah, we back, man. Um, you know it's a lot when I'm not saying nothing. Hey, nothing. Hey, hey, you well, I'm that not saying mug, nothing. Yeah. And hey, that spoke volumes by yes. itself, right? Um, hold on. Um, comment. <laughs> man, my wife said. Brothers educated and a raccoon chaser. Casper, <laughs> <laughs> Casper, you funny. <laughs> educated, cool. educated, cool. Now, right up. That's oh my god. That's uh, hilarious. Uh, my man Harold, he said in regards to the schools, in regards to taking prayer out the schools. You know, I think what he's trying to say is that that seems like a, a strategic move, also because oh, of. Course. of the way we believe in prayer, that type of thing. So, um, hey, but, but listen, yeah. let, let's go, go here. If you, if you, you know, you grow up. It's two types of church, right? It's gospel and Christian music, right? That, that's that's what I'm talking about. There, they don't even want us to pray with them. Mm. You see what I'm saying? We going <laughs> up yonder. Who is we? Because <laughs> I ain't never heard we going up yonder in no white church. So who is this we we talking about? And who what Jesus is you praying to? <laughs> Because <laughs> we laying our burdens at his side, and, and it's a different we. Like, to this very day, Kurt Franklin, if you type him up, he probably the only one to come up on gospel and Christian. Marvin, our favorite gospel singers. No, no. They ain't going to be on that Christian. We don't know Toby mm -hmm. Mack and all them. Wow. Interesting. They, we completely segregated. Interesting. And we supposed mm -hmm. to be having the same Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> well, we did take the religion of our slavers, but that's a different story. Mm. We're supposed to have the same Jesus. And, and that's what I mean by we See, have listen, to accept. I ain't going there, though. Hey, let me say, now nah, I will go there because I ain't no Bible. But I bet you did. Let's go here. Damn, damn, where you at? Who, who <laughs> wanted to say fuck white people in public? <laughs> <laughs> if you can't say fuck white people in public, yes! I got white friends, I got a white auntie. If you can't say it, that means you ain't a real one with your people, boss. Because cause look. You start to sound like Biden over there. No, no, I'm talking about, no, no, no. You start to sound like Biden. White people know what they did to you. They ain't fucking crazy. They know they built this country on your back. So if you, if you fucked me over my whole life, my grandmama, my grandmama's grandmama, and I say, man, fuck you, you respect that. And we sit here, say fuck white people. Can't say it. I mean, I got to, got to, I got to go to work tomorrow, man. I got to, 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 I got to be some good nigga. Sometimes I can't always, but just think about that. How many people cannot say fuck white people? And you know, there's a lot of people that have certain jobs that wouldn't be able to say it. There's a lot of people that are in positions. Can you say it? Where would uh huh? I don't feel that way. You don't feel like white people like you. Feel like white people like you. I don't feel that way. I don't feel like fuck white people. So do you feel like white people like you though? I don't feel that either. I don't feel, I don't feel prejudice. I can count. I don't feel it. I don't you see get it. it. And I feel like, I feel like if I, if, if, if I saw somebody in line and they was mean to me, I could in my mind say, well, racist. But before I could say that, it all depends on them. 
in a, and when I stay in my nice space, I look up and they nice. I don't feel it. So I don't when you, have when you the say, reason to say, fuck. That's interesting you just said that, but you have five boys. I do. Do they feel it? No. You don't think they feel no, uh, I, any I, prejudice I, at all? We have had, we have conversations all the time. We chose to put our children in a situation. With white people? With all people. <laughs> All people. Mm -hmm. They go to school with all people. Asians. We didn't know. Yes. Yes. Koreans. So, and and, and I've had this conversation before. Mm -hmm. They go to school with us. My kids go to school with mixed as they well, but they see the difference. All mixed they see the difference. I, I, I think you're fooling yourself. You think they don't see the difference. Now, I'm going to tell you, my son. They he, see the difference. My son at an early age didn't see the difference. Not early on. He, he, didn't, see, he, he didn't see the difference. You got to go through something. Yeah. It's time to date. Yeah. He, he, had, he had to see it. He had to see something happen, not see it on TV, not read it or hear about it. He actually had to see it. And when he saw it, I mean, he was actually at a high school football game and called me. And he's like, Dad, I get it. That's what you talking about, bro. He said, that day when you got on me because um, in my chat, you know, I used to check his phone back in the day, in my chat, and um, this dude was like, yo, you my nigga? And that type of stuff, and I was laughing at it. He said, "I get it." He, he said, "I get what you're saying, and um, I, I'll be I'll be aware of it going forward." And I, I think, as as Mike was saying, there's the younger generation don't feel it as early because, like I said, they're going to school, especially if you're going to school, like I said, in a mixed school. If you're on the outskirts, usually mm -hmm. out there in, in Douglas County, um, in, in Hiram, um, you know, you're going to school, so you don't feel it early on. But we're also helping blind them from that, too. I exactly. Well, it, it, I mean, they, they saw something. I'm, I'm not, we talked about it. You know, it, was, it was a couple of boys on a basketball team. A situation happened. It was on the news. And they, you know, it was like, well, mommy, you know, they probably wouldn't have been so bad had she not been white. You know, so, but... We have conversations about this, and I mean, I, I have feelings. I mean, with my with my boys, because especially the ones, these last ones that just graduated from high school, because we went and it's all it's very diverse. They like, I'm like asking, like, oh, so you talking to somebody? Well, what nationality is she? Because I'm like, well, why? What, what's wrong with us blacks? What's wrong with dating a black girl? He's like, mommy, you should see them. They ghetto. They mm. come with these fuzzy slippers on every day. I mean, and it bothers me because you I'm black a queen. Woman. I'm yeah. a black woman. But look at what they have to pick from. Beautiful I women. Been to the school. Beautiful it is, women. It, it, it does come in a form. I mean, they was raised a certain way. They they don't see their mother acting in that way. So it's like I'm not gonna choose her. I'm matter of fact, forget it. Color don't even matter to me. This gonna be hard for you. Do you think you socialize to appreciate white people? Mm. I think I so like so 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 race 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 <laughs> no, right? is, race 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 is a is a social a, construct. Uh -huh. So we often socialize ourselves to be like if you're gonna be in a white environment, you gotta you gotta you gotta let go of blackness, right? In the white environment, the more you have to release your black, you have to negotiate your blackness. When can I be black? When can I not be black? Mm. So like we have to, that work voice. Right, 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 right. Yeah. We, have to, so we, have to, we have to condition ourselves and socialize ourselves to be in that environment. Right, that's not where we come from. That's not how we speak. That's not how we behave, right? So you go to a barbecue just past Memorial Day, Frankie Beverly on. The lion dance, come on. You at your wife friend's house, that don't happen. Mm. Who is Frankie Beverly? If it weren't for Beyonce, they wouldn't know who he was. Who don't know who Frank But she ain't nobody black not knowing before I let go. You see what I'm saying? So I'm asking, do you think you socialize into whiteness in the sense that do you, like, it's, it's a subconscious thing, right? It's subconscious. I, I, I think so, too. I think, I think it's, we've had to do it for so long that we don't even recognize when, we, when we're right. doing it. It's and the, we think it's, it's normal. It's we that, think people it's, that don't it's, do it's it. It's that, that acceptance up. thing that I was talking about, yeah. trying to be Mother accepted while, you, mm -hmm. while you're around them. You know, you know, it's it's you wear many hats. You know, if I have a professionalism, I'm a realtor, so I'm gonna be that realtor, professional realtor, whoever house I step into, white, black, blue, it don't what, matter. But what's professional? Same. Professional, 
<laughs> who sets the standards for what a professional, professional is? Professional is knowing your job. I'm not gonna sit in someone's house mm -hmm. and act a certain way that I would act at home with my girlfriends. It's it's a it's a certain way that you conduct yourself in different situations. Would you would you go? You're would you, calling it white. I don't pin it on yeah, socializing it's with black people, white. You better I don't dance that. right, or they're not bizarre. Right, 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 right. I think, I think but, 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 black but, people take your ass up on Flamingo Road on the damn shucky job and see if you get any business. Oh. Take your ass up on Flamingo Road and shuck your job and see if you're going to get anybody to endorse you or otherwise. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's well, a very think... affluent area. That's Andy Young, uh, uh, Hank Aaron, great people like that, you know, different people. So, I mean, it's, it's a, I think what she's saying, I, I hear how you're saying it, but what she's basically saying, anybody that's made it to a certain level, you're going to carry yourself a certain way, okay, when, when, just like us. When the camera's off, we joke a hell of a lot more and say some things that we wouldn't dare say on camera. Why? Because we want to keep that algorithm going in the right direction. <laughs> All right? So, and, and I totally feel what you're saying because I feel and I know about a lot of what you're saying. I'm saying, but it's not being realistic in America because institu it's institutionalized racism that you're saying you're not black if you don't say fuck this or fuck that because a lot of things, the real thing that makes it is how many... Uh, governments are controlled by African Americans, other than the major in infrastructures of cities. Okay, how many black governors? You know, things like that. So when you don't carry yourself a certain way, it's just like you have to, I, anybody. I got a, nah, um, I a future son-in-law that has to do certain things. Now, okay, does he keep his blackness? Of course he does, because he's steeped in it. He deals with it. He knows how he's going to have to teach, teach his kids to deal with a violent society that ain't using guns anymore. Okay? So if you sit up there and don't teach your kid and you keep them off, off of this, yeah, 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 do this, do this, do this, you know what? Your kids ain't going to get shit their whole life. You know why? Because we haven't set up the infrastructure. Like you said, one white uh, billionaire owns more money than all the black people combined. So you can go in this shit and say, oh, yeah, rage against machine, rage against machine. That's some shit white people can do. Black people have to slowly get our shit together. Part of get, okay, you may not call them out, but we need to start asking questions of black politicians like, okay, there's no difference in a black's ability to learn than a white's learn. Why are inner city schools constantly failing? LeBron, I put him ahead of Michael MJ for one reason, what he does off the court, okay? He takes time, he's, what is he up to almost 2,000 kids, he's uh, giving college education to now black kids. He's got a school that teaches young black men how to carry themselves and be productive in this uh, society. Okay, so yeah, if you sit up there and you, there's a lot of kids you have to, things, you, protections you have to teach a child so he can perform in a racist society. And let's, it's not let's, cool. let's so, it's it's not, so is the concept similar. of whiteness a state of being? So the concept of whiteness is a construct that, um, that's steeped in the fabrics of America. It's in the air we breathe. It's in the way the trees grow and the grass grow. Mm -hmm. Whiteness is the fundamental reason America is what it is. Whiteness was in the Constitution. Whiteness was in the, was in, was in the, is in the reason we got the Second Amendment. It's the reason why we got 13th, 14th, 15th Amendment. Whiteness is, is, the, bene, is, is, the, is the greatest benefactor of whiteness is the white upper class male. Mm. The person who suffers the most is the black female. Everybody else is, is fighting for some position in between there. But what, what, to pull back what you're saying, what I'm saying, when you say professionalism, I don't think being black means you got to run around with an afro and be uh, Minister Farrakhan, right? But I do think blackness means that you got to stand on what I, I'm black, and I ain't scared yeah. to be that. Absolutely. So when, I, when I say Absolutely. professionalism, I ask, what is the standard but of professionalism? That is where I'm, but I can't agree with you personally because that's how I'm going to be wherever I go. This right. is who I am. You know, and I'm not saying that I'm going to be different at home with my girlfriends because three of them could be white girls. I'm not saying that. You let white people in your house? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> 
No, I'm asking you. Let him in your house. <laughs> yes, I let him in my house. Oh. <laughs> I do. I have before too, so I'm not just beating you up. Like, He's a happy boy too. I, I am so happy that I don't. I'm not built on those grounds because I don't be nervous every day of my life. It's not about when you. Yeah, but it is. It's true. I, oh Lord, I got. I'm about to be around these these type of people. So let me do this and let me sit this way and let me. I would be nervous, a nervous wreck every day. Because you don't know the truth. I am who I am. If you if you know the truth, you wouldn't be nervous. No, you, got, you can stand on truth. No, if I'm saying, I'm saying, if 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 I was where you're trying to place me, or where you're asking me, I'm asking you to know the truth. The white people don't like you. Them people that's in your house, that's no, them that's people that's in your house, are one are one the in law away like from not liking you. They don't mm. like me either. They like you because they don't like you because who you are. They don't like you because you're black. Like it's white people that don't like you simply because you're black. Let me but tell you, black person don't, don't like us. That, that don't stop me from doing what I do every single day, and I help them every single day. Right, 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 right. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, I don't think you understand. I don't think you have. I don't think you understand the the, the social construct, and I don't think you really realize the truth and the power that we possess. Right. So black people can be Michelle Obama's black. She's just as black as Minister Farrakhan. Oprah Winfrey is black, and she's just as black as Angela Davis. And those are two different spectrums of blackness, mm -hmm. but they all come together for when it's the appropriate for helping for, for themselves, themselves, their family, and the broad sense of what blackness is. They make sure that black people are educated. They make sure that black people are aware. And, the, and you gotta be able to stand on that truth. That's mm -hmm. true, but you can stand on that truth, but at the same time, we're not Oprah. We're not up there. We haven't made it. No, that no, no. Uh, uh, Oprah still get saying, Oprah still get called a nigga. But what I'm saying, what, what I'm, I'm not saying it to that point. I'm saying that we still fighting, trying to learn because we didn't get it. Everybody starting at ground zero. We talk about this all the time. So you're fighting. You went started at ground zero. You put your kids at Afro Central School. What happened? If your kids were at Afro Central School, they went started at ground zero. If my kids were what? If now? your kids were getting an Afro Central education. They wouldn't be starting I'm not talking yet. about, I'm not talking about, you stuck on who we are. I'm yeah, talking yeah. about how to survive. I'm talking about financial literacy. I'm talking about all those other components that would get you to where uh, Oprah is so that they can give back. We fight, I mean, sh sprinkle some down on me. You know what I'm what saying? What is this money? Money ain't, money I'm ain't. Not, I'm talking about knowledge. I'm talking about knowledge. Knowledge is free. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is free. It is free. But you start to begin to try to get that knowledge a lot of times at a later age because you started at zero. And that ain't talking about the color of your skin, bro. Yeah. It's not talking about that. It's talking about ground zero. My mama didn't teach it to me because she didn't know her mama didn't teach it to her. And you try to break that generational curse mm -hmm. so that all generations can stop starting at zero and they know what they know. That's why I'm becoming a life insurance agent. There's so, so many Let me plug my school. Let me plug my school. Kilambo. Know they don't know. Kilambo is on the east side. Black, white, or blue? It's all black. Afrocentric. You learn about reparations. You learn about Toussaint Louverture. Okay, so when you, uh, no, and knowing about reparations, what, what have you done to, to, to as, as far as a solution for that? Because he says all the time. Okay, so I, I can tell you the five steps of reparations that's based upon the NCOBRA. The NCOBRA is a national reparations group. Mm -hmm. John Conyers, mm -hmm. every day to the day he died, pushed the HR 40 bill. Into into Congress. Mm -hmm. uh, to the day he died, from 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 Detroit, all financial problems start in the House. Okay. Agree. All financial problems. Uh, no, no. When I'm saying the House of Representatives, so mm -hmm. if you want to get money for reparations, you got to start there. So, but you just can't like Ice Cube just came out here and just kind of boom did it right. But it's no, you got a hundred year research on this stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So you got to understand the first thing you got to do is get healing. We have to know we've been harmed. A lot of us are so doped up with ignorance that we don't even know we've been harmed. Second thing we got to do. Yeah, a lot of people do. A lot of people, man, you, you can't even say fuck white people. And that you know what they did to you. They sent you that bad ass school. But you then wanna, why would you, you say wanna, that? Because you're supposed to be healing, right? So why would you even want to Part of your healing is letting that rage go. No, no. Part of that healing is letting your rage go. And letting that rage go. Truth. You get, getting that out of And then the next right. part is. Everybody's not enraged, though. You can't expect everybody to because feel the not, same way. And if, you can't say they're ignorant because they don't that way or feel mm -hmm. that way or say those things. It, it, to, to know what we've been through and not being raised is a problem. That means you don't have feelings. You can't oh, rape my grandmama and then think I'm going to be okay. You can't, you can't exploit my father and think I'm going to be okay. You can't cheat my granddad out of his GI Bill, literally, and then think I'm going to be okay. You can't, tell me to, you can't tell me to go to school for 12 years and you never taught me who Elijah Muhammad was. 
You, you, man, hell yeah, I'm mad about that. When I learned what I learned on my own and you knew this the whole time, what good am I saying Omni? One million niggas to satisfy my mind. They lie, but I found the truth. And when I find this truth out that this is all, everything, this shit ain't no accident. We ignorant for a reason. I don't take all those things. That's, that's where my disconnect comes with you. You're stressing so much on, you got this thing that most people that are educated, because the majority of African Americans that are educated got it from HBCUs. So they got it right. And a lot of us know, a lot of us are taught by your parents and what the biggest segment of us, the ones that are killing each other at accelerated rates, the number one cause of death for black males is gun violence. Who make okay. guns? No, I, I'm not, hold on, bro, let me talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what I'm saying by it, where the damage has to be, they really need to be educated because there's nobody on this panel. No, man. There's no, no, my, listen, listen. The point what I'm trying to get you to see is I know you taught your sons, didn't you? Growing up, okay, that wasn't taught, right? I know I got that. Most people for military background parents did, okay? And I know your parents shot it out to you, JT, and I know you, I definitely know your parents did, okay? So my whole point is this, but there's a large amount of us that are doing it right. The people that we need to connect with and get that out to are inner city youth because very no, ones that are killing each other. more harm than any youth. This summer. Clarence Thomas would do more harm this summer than any youth. What I'm in saying Atlanta. is if we put more pressure Ela in on churches. That. So the, the Supreme Court has several things they're gonna hold, vote hold, on. Hold that thought, hold that thought. We we're gonna uh, we're gonna take a break, y'all. You know we have to do this because like I said, we're on Spotify, Amazon, and all this stuff. So we have to take breaks, commercial breaks, and we got sponsors. We'll be right back. We're gonna start with that. Yeah. Start with that.